Can you make money with your voice? Can you make money sharing your words? Can you get paid to speak for a living? Well, that's what I've been doing for about 12 or 15 years now, is earning my money speaking to the public. And that is exactly what this episode is about, is how to get paid to speak. The extraordinary belongs to those that create it. Rebelling against business plans and debt, rebelling against what society expects of us to build cool businesses, make money, have fun and do good. Let's create something extraordinary together. Welcome to The Rebel Entrepreneur. So welcome to the Rebel Entrepreneur Coaching Series. This is episode five and Kim is back with me. Welcome, Kim. Thank you. Nice. It's, it's nice to be here. I'm excited. <laughs> it's been a while since we've chatted and it's lovely to have you back. You always brighten my day because you turn up with a gorgeous smile and I'm just happy to have you here again. Oh, same. I feel the same way. It's very nice to be here. <laughs> So we've got a little bit of a tangent from the podcast episodes we've been doing so far because we had how to launch a podcast, preparing for the first episode, the first episode and what's next, podcast promotional strategy. And now we're taking a tangent to getting paid to speak. Tell me what's going on. Yeah, so it's all kind of like um, part of the bigger picture. I've, I'm having, I'm going through this enormous transition in my business, which is very exciting. I have, I, I feel like I want to share that piece. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, the last 15 years, I've been seeing clients as a psychotherapist and then, and then a coach. And I've just told most of my people that I've been seeing that I'm not going to see them anymore. Wow. Which is huge, like big change for me. And I'm going to focus on, running the psychotherapy practice that I own and then moving into some of these more um, creative and hopefully impactful ways of showing up with the wisdom that I've gained over the last 15 years of my career. So that's kind of the crossroads that I'm at is that I, you know, I want to do a podcast. I want to speak. I want to have, you know, online courses or things like that where, I'm doing what I love and I'm spreading information that maybe isn't accessible for people normally um, or easily without a financial commitment and reaching wider audiences. But yeah, being more, yeah, feeling like I'm giving something back to the world more accessibly. So that's, that's that. where I'm at. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know exactly. Like, I just have a lot of questions in this realm because it's completely foreign to what I've been doing in my career. I love that because, well, my personal opinion is one to one, you can have a huge impact. And there is like, it is incredible what you can do. And if you're speaking one to many, like, you can have an incredible impact, but on many people at the same time. And I think there are some in-depth details that one-to-one -one tackles that you can't tackle necessarily with the bigger speaking pieces, but you can have a huge impact. So that 15 years of experience of helping people, like we can help thousands and thousands and thousands by communicating in different ways. And that's that's kind of the way I see it and what I've been doing. And I had that realization early on in my business that it was far easier far more impactful to talk to a giant room of people or talk to a giant podcast full of people and share that information and I love the coaching series on the podcast because I feel it does both like I get yeah. to help you and help thousands of people at the same time which is which is incredible and like last week we had 9,000 listeners to the podcast oh my gosh. and you think awesome. wow like the support so if you're listening to this like there are ways to get out there help more people get recognized all sorts of things but tell me your specific question about the the paid speaking piece what are you thinking yeah well there's a few so I think the biggest question is how like I just don't <laughs> have any clue how <laughs> to get speaking gigs and then the other question is, I guess, energy, 
exhaustion. I'm kind of like, I want to live a spacious life. I don't want to be pursuing something that's going to be super draining for me. I'm trying to figure out where I should focus my energy. So instead of seeing a thousand clients in a week, you know, I want to create a podcast and and speak on social media, for example, and maybe do like some speaking gigs. And I'm not necessarily looking for an enormous income at this point in my career. I'm more looking to feel like it's something that I enjoy and it's going to impact people's lives. So, cool. yeah, I think those are the questions that are up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, a couple of thoughts for you. Number one is you can earn good money speaking, very good money speaking. So there is income to be made. There is money to be made. Uh, and we can go through how to do that. Number two, you mentioned energy. I think this is a personal thing and you would have to try it. Yeah. So I used to run two-day workshops for Microsoft called uh, Coaching for Presence. And I would help their key people to have more presence and impact when speaking or speaking in small meetings. And it was two days with six people. It was very intense and like they came out as different people after two days of being stuck in a room with me. And (laughs) I loved it. Like I was so energized. I love, we, we would laugh. One of the pieces of feedback was I'd never cried with laughter on a training course until I met Alan. Um, (laughs) And we had so much fun, but I found, I found using humor to point out things they were doing as a great way to like crack through that. Cause then they would laugh, they would feel it and they would never act the same way because they saw their life in a different way. They saw their speaking in a different way, but it was intense. It took a lot of energy. And when you go and do the big speeches, the big things, I've done some big, big ones, like it does take energy, but I always left feeling buzzed. Yeah. But I think energized. that depends on you and the way you look at it. So I would say try it like we need to do a mini experiment and test it. Let's put you in front of an audience, a few audiences and see how you feel. And I mean, even this podcasting, like you don't feel it because it's just you and I chatting. But right. There's an audience of thousands and thousands listening to this. And then you start to think, well, OK, like I am reaching people. Do I feel buzzed after this? And I feel buzzed after doing the coaching episodes of this series and I did one last week and the gentleman came on and he had a specific problem and I was able to unlock the way he thought and I know it'll do the same for the people listening. So I leave that feeling full of energy and full of life. But I know that I'm not necessarily normal on that front. (laughs) Well, I feel the same way. Like I... It's, I think the difference for me is I've run groups, but they've been small for ages. You know, my entire career I've been running groups. So I am very energized by running small groups, but I've never spoken to a large audience and have had them in the room with me. You know, I'm on social media and at this point now I've done podcasts and I like, I feel comfortable with the idea that people are there, just not in the moment. (laughs) (laughs) So it is different when you have got 200 people in front of you and the most brutal form of speaking is stand up comedy because people will tell you exactly what they think. They will boo you. They will laugh. They will cheer. They will heckle. They will throw in salts. That is the most instant of feedback that you could possibly imagine. Um, But then also on the other side, the connection with the audience, if it's going well, is unbelievable. Like that, the buzz of laughter and energy and fun and connection. And then there's all the levels in between of like corporate speaking to an audience of 100 who will be polite to you no matter what you say (laughs) and then talk behind your back afterwards. And then to a podcast where you, like on this particular podcast, we're probably three months before your episode comes out. Like we're so divorced from the audience reaction until it happens. And there's everywhere in between on that scale. 
Yeah. Which I think like it sounds exciting to me, but my I think my motivation is more to be able to share information. Like I never really saw myself as like being a speaker, but I'm in a place of like I want to share the wisdom that I have and I feel comfortable with groups and it's you know, I I think I think I would enjoy it. I've never really done it, so let's have a go. Yeah. So can I recommend a, a, an interesting way to start? Sure. So there are plenty of groups in your local area who will be looking for speakers. You won't get paid, but you could easily line up two of three speakers at the local Rotary Club or this club or that club and go and test it. Then you don't have to drive far. You don't have to go very far. There's an audience who are interested possibly in your subject, we'll find out when we pitch to them. But we can do a mini experiment and go and talk to three, four groups and see if you enjoy it because you don't know. Also, I would say your first time is going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a strange sentence, but like your first time doing anything is uncomfortable. Um, Whatever it is, speaking, launching a business, the other stuff like the first time is always a little bit uncomfortable and it takes two or three to get to a point that you feel more comfortable so I would say because I think so many people come on my course and they try things once and then they go oh that wasn't very good and I'm like well you didn't push through you haven't pushed through to the point that (laughs) it actually does (laughs) feel good like The first time people go to a formal networking meeting, they go, this is rubbish. I don't like this. I feel uncomfortable talking to everyone. And so, well, until you've been two or three times, you're not going to get to a stage where you feel comfortable. So I think like the size of the mini experiment is important. So doing two or three, not just doing one and going, that was amazing or that was rubbish, and then deciding all speaking is bad based on one (laughs) experience, Um, which I know sounds really daft when I say it, but it's genuinely how people act with this stuff. Yeah, I totally get that. Like if I had stopped doing Instagram posts after the first like month or two, (laughs) I would have thought the same thing, you know? Yes, Yeah. Does that make sense as a mini experiment? Absolutely. Yeah. So we can find some of those clubs that look for speakers in your local area and say, look, this is what I do. This is what I want to do. Here's my ideas for talks. Would you be interested? And let's book two or three um, and then go from there. How does that sound? Do you think you could do that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think I am like also in a transition of what I've what I want to share and that's like a part of the the messiness that needs to get clarified before I start reaching out to people well then all we need to do is come up with three or four titles you'd be happy about speaking on and send it to there that's it so when my general opinion is sell before you create why would you ever ever write a training course until you've sold it It just doesn't make sense to me. And I've met so many trainers that write all the content before they go out and sell it. Then they realize no one wants that subject. Like it's pointless to me. So what I would do is when I was working for Microsoft, I sold them the first course and then I was thinking about working with them some more. So I sent them a list of here's nine titles of courses I could do. And they came back and said like that one, no, this one, no. That one sounds quite interesting. Tell me more. Then I would write a paragraph blurb and say, this is what I was thinking of covering. Uh, And then they say, oh, no, not quite that, this. And I would develop it. And then they would book it. And then I would write the course. So what I would say to you is with these people, we're going out there. Let's just come up with three or four titles that would get them excited and offer it to them and see which one they go for. You need to be excited about it too. Don't get me wrong. Don't offer them titles you don't want to talk about. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, that's super helpful because I think, um, you know, I've had, like, I've experienced coaches saying in in both extremes, like, only go for, only do what energizes you and, like, make it all about, you know, what's going to sell, like, what's, a niche that's not tapped, for example. And 
I kind of land in the middle too. So it's nice to hear that strat- that strategy aligns with how I generally would would think too. So there's an expression my wife likes to scream at me with swear words occasionally, uh, which is it's not binary. And like binary in the computer world is where everything is one or zero. And coaches, internet marketers, people on the internet like to take strong positions to polarize the audience and attract people towards them. But it's not really how life is. It's not binary. It's not either you love it or you get paid for it that it doesn't have to be one or zero. It can fall somewhere in, actually, I really quite enjoy that subject and it's having a massive impact and I'm getting paid money. There is that circle out there that you can find and it is not binary. So I want to scream to everyone listening to this. (laughs) It's not binary. It's okay. You can find somewhere in between. Um, yeah, so like, let's just brainstorm three, four titles right now, and then we can get on to the mini experiment. And then I will go through how do you get paid to speak afterwards, the promise of the episode. But what kind of subjects do you have in mind? Recently, I've been really wanting to help women think outside the box. So creating careers or businesses that are outside of the nine to five, outside of the norm and more created out of their sort of like feminine flow and creativity. So that's a, that's a lot to encompass in a title, but. Can yeah. you get paid to do something you enjoy doing? Yeah. And maybe like, the, I, I think I need to add something in there about operating from feminine energy too, or maybe that could be a separate, a separate topic. So there are definite women's groups you can go and speak to on these subjects. And the one that came to mind in the UK is Women's Institute. But I don't know if there's a similar thing in the US (laughs) because let's be perfectly honest, I'm not up on women's groups uh, in the United (laughs) States of America. I'd even struggle in England. Um, But I think if we could find that group, that that subject would pitch very well to them. Um, Yeah. Yeah, there's bound to be those different groups in your area. Yeah, there are groups that I'm part of that first. Now that we're talking about it, there are groups that I'm part of that I could pitch to. Perfect. So it could be, I don't know, let's brainstorm ideas. Women's flow leading to the career of your dreams. Yeah, like Um, tapping into feminine energy to create the business well so this the groups i'm thinking of are business related groups so maybe um tapping into feminine energy to create more ease in your business like that's definitely something that i enjoy talking about i love that do you like i'm gonna randomly spout out ideas yeah a lot of them could be rubbish because (laughs) i'm not an expert on this subject so like (laughs) take it with a pinch of salt but like 10 ways to use feminine energy to build the business of your dreams yeah i love that i don't think like that see the these um like the the hooks in titles it's lovely to hear your perspective on that (laughs) I think it's just like we need something that like gets them going oh yeah that sounds like a really good thing to do and then actually it also gives you a nice structure because your talk is very easy to go what are the 10 ways or the five ways or this or that and then you have an intro intro five ways five examples and a summary with a call to action and we've written your speech in about half an hour but those titles can really help us to do that and it could be five ways women avoid connecting with their feminine energy and how that creates problems in our business. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. I need more words from you to inspire me to come up with more examples. <laughs> sure. But uh but that's sure. the kind of that's the kind of thing of like those different bits and we come up with five or six titles, send them to them and go I could do I could speak on any of these titles. Which ones excite you the most and can we book a date? I'm not going to charge you anything. I just want to write, create it and have fun doing it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I love that. I mean, there's definitely lots of other topics I could speak on. I kind of have to like sit down and 
get clear on what the top are right now because I'm still in flux at the moment about where I'm <laughs> That's going. Okay. We can write that. And it might be the five biggest mistakes women make in business. And it could be after 15 years as a, um, as a, what's the word I'm looking for? Psychiatrist? No. Psychotherapist. As a psych, after 15 years as a psychotherapist, these are the five biggest mistakes women make while in business in the 2020s. Um, and it, like, we can have some fun with that using your experience, tying into it. It could be, yeah, five ways to find energy to grow your business, five ways that. to tap into your creativity. It could be you have unlimited energy, five ways to tap into it. I don't know. There's these like are, some kind of gold. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> um, but you can kind of see how I have a little structure in my head for different pieces and then yeah. you can just fit in the subject into that structure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we do a pitch and like to everyone listening to this, if you've ever thought about doing a speaking business, if you've ever thought about doing presentations to drive traffic to your website or whatever it is, like that's basically the structure that I would do is come up with a bunch of titles which are five ways to do this or how this will deliver this for you or this is the dream you want and here's what's stopping you getting it. And then I would go and find groups that are interested and pitch them the different ideas and do a mini experiment to see, do you enjoy doing it? Do they enjoy having you? And do you think it'll lead to opportunities? And then if it does, great, we'll go forward and push forwards. If it doesn't, then we'll try something else. <laughs> And then where do you go from there? So that's like, I can definitely do free speeches, but how do you, how do you get signed on for paid speaking gigs? How do you get signed on for paid speaking gigs? So let me give you some different ways to make money out of speaking. And just as I do, uh, I've done a lot of this. One of the people I learned from is a guy called Darren LaCroix, uh, and his content is very good. So I just wanted to mention like some of his, my thoughts come from him. And uh, yeah, I've spent a long time doing this. So here's some thoughts. Number one is information marketer. So what I mean by that is you would go out and do the talks and you would do all the talks for free, but at the back end you have, here's the online course, here's the product, or even you've already got the coaching business behind you, so you can feed the funnel for all your coaches by you speaking. So the speech might be free, but there is always a way to make money from the back end. Does that make sense? Yeah, that totally makes sense. I mean, that takes a lot of the pressure off to to make it worth the energy that you're spending, making it happen, and the time that you're taking. Because time is really important to me. You know, I want to be available for my kids, so I don't make these decisions lightly. <laughs> yes, which again, like, actually brings us on to number two. So number one is information marketer. Number two is like a lead generator which actually like differentiating lead generator is specifically like you winning clients for your coaches, which you get a cut out of. So all of your speeches are positioned at generating leads. Financial planners use this model a lot. They go and talk about the latest tax changes or this or that. Accountants use it. They give free talks about what's changing in the accountants world. Solicitors use it. They go out and give free talks about the the ways you might get sued <laughs> or the different problems. And then obviously like after the talk, you go, oh, that person was really good. I should speak to them about my business and this and that. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of people that use this as a lead generator for their business. So that makes sense. Like you've got information marketer, you've got lead generator. Those are the two there. Ready for number three? Yeah, I'm ready. What is it? I'm <laughs> curious. <laughs> um, so number three, I would say is like I've seen this happen a few times. It's like a sponsorship 
or uh, someone you get sponsored to speak. And basically, this is what the entire Rebel Business School is built off. Uh, we get sponsors who want to inspire the community to build businesses without debt. And they pay us to go and give the talks. And there are many different versions of this, but you can get sponsored by someone who wants to help the audience. We've got people in the UK who do foundations about helping kids to be better communicators. And they pay for speakers to go into schools to deliver these talks. Um, so there is a way to find someone who wants to help the audience you want to help. I bet you there are foundations about like helping women to be more confident, helping women to do this, help it. There's, there's bound to be. So we can find those, speak to them about your experience, what you're doing, see if your missions align, uh, and then find sponsorship for you. So it's like a sponsorship speaker, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Ready for the next? Yes, please. Awesome. There's so many ways to make money. This is what I love about this. I don't think people genuinely think about these sometimes, but there are so many ways to make money. Um, the next is number four, which I don't think fits you, but for completeness and for the audience, I think it's useful. It's like the salary, the job as a speaker. There are training departments, there are companies that hire speakers, there are uh, training companies specifically that want speakers to deliver these things. There are so many different ways and people out there that have these like companies that earn money. We do. We hire speakers for Rebel Business School because I can't deliver all of the talks we do around the world. Mm -hmm. Neither can Simon, so we have to hire speakers and wow. our particular ones are contract based so we pay them x pounds a day and they deliver so much for us but there are organizations that already have your audience they already have the customers that you could do a contract with or get paid to be a speaker it's probably not quite the right one for you but you never know i did a little bit of this when i started and it seemed to work quite well yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be like uh, pursuing this as a career, <laughs> but I don't know. Who knows? I never know where I'm going in my future. <laughs> and at the moment, we're in the idea phase. So there's definitely, here's the ideas. Here's what we're doing. Um, but that is an option. Uh, cool. That is an option. And the team at Rebel Business School are always looking for incredible trainers who can captivate and light up an audience and create change. Uh, and if we can find those people, like they're incredible. We found a few and they work with us regularly over the years. That's awesome. And then we do all the work of finding the customers uh, and they get to rock up and do the fun bit, which is inspiring people. Yeah, that's totally how my business works too, except for therapist, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, cool. Number five is, would be the trainer. I would call it the trainer. And I did this for years, so I would run workshops, seminars for Microsoft, Pepsi, different people, and they would pay me to run a course. It's a little bit different from like your keynote speaking. Your keynote speaking tends to be like you deliver a 45-minute speech and you get paid bigger bucks to do it. A seminar leader would go into a company and might do a half day, uh, a full day, a lunchtime talk, and it's normally smaller groups. A little bit smaller pay, but you can still get paid very well. You can get paid one, two, five grand a day to do this. Yeah. So it's decent money. And especially if you've like created it yourself, you've got really good content, like people will just hire you and hire you. I worked for 10 years for Microsoft delivering the same course. Wow. I loved it. And first time I delivered the course was a huge amount of work to prepare all the content. Mm-hmm. But by the end of the like year eight, nine, well, by the end of year one, after delivering it a few times, I didn't have to do any prep. I would just turn up in the room. I knew my slides. I knew my content. I delivered it. Everyone loved it. It was a delight. And I was literally being paid those amounts for 
a day of time because I would do what I did. I'd set them homework and then I'd go home and I wouldn't have to think about it again. To start with, some of this is a lot of development to write the talk and the content, but you deliver it over years, years and years, because if you're delivering 100 people a time, it's going to take you a while to get through the 7 billion people on the planet. So you can deliver the same content (laughs) regularly. (laughs) That makes sense. Uh, yeah so five is trainer any thoughts on that one yeah I think um that one feels natural and I don't think I'd be pursuing speaking as a job I mean unless it just happens to go that direction and I'll go there (laughs) that's that's where life takes me (laughs) um but yeah that feels pretty similar to how I already operate the groups that I run. So it feels like a natural progression. The one thing I would say, it was a split number five into two different pieces. There is one way you're doing it for someone else. And there's one way you're doing it for yourself. So if you've got a big enough following, you can sell tickets to your speeches or your training sessions. You could do a weekend retreat and sell ticket tickets to the weekend retreat and fill your own course your own weekend retreat, whatever it is. Or you do what I did and go, well, I went out and got Microsoft and like they filled the thing and they paid me. Um, I had one client and they would just repeatedly hire me, which was a yeah. lot less work than doing your own thing. Um, doing your own thing can be very rewarding in different ways. But to fill a course with 30 people, you have to sell 30 tickets to fill 30 courses with Microsoft, I had to sell one person and then repeat. Um, so there is a lot more work on the doing it yourself side yeah, than doing sense. it as for a company. However, the lion's share of the profit is always, always with the person who sells it. So if you're doing it for someone else and they're filling in the room, you'll get less money. Gotcha. If you're doing it for yourself, you'll get paid more. And this is one of the things like speakers hate because speakers like to speak. They don't like to sell. <laughs> and they're like, I just want you to put me in front of an audience and pay me to do it. It's like, well, okay, great. But who's going to fill the room? Because that's the lion's share of the work. And speakers don't like that way of thinking. But whoever sells it will get the lion's share of the money. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, just reviewing the possibilities here i think like energetically the first two or the first three feel aligned with where i am at the moment even just running workshops right now just because i'm trying to not have as much client involvement at the moment i need like a break from it i think the first three are more ideal for me at the moment and then maybe once i kind of recover from the burnout that I'm (laughs) needing to recover from of the last 15 years of involved, you know, being very involved with clients that I would probably go back to some of that more workshop oriented work. Cause I do enjoy it. I just need like a break for a little while. Okay. Makes sense. Let me give you number six for completion. And then we're, I know (laughs) we do. We'll we'll stop at six. Six is good. (laughs) Um, six is like the full-time keynote presenter. Okay. So I don't know if you've ever heard of these things called speakers bureaus. No. So a speaker bureau is an organization that large companies, event organizers, event planners will go to and say, we're planning an event. We need a speaker for X. And the speakers bureau will have a list of speakers on their books that they can recommend. Good to know. The challenge with this model is there are a lot of people out there who want to get paid to speak because it's like a fun, nice presentation. The speakers bureaus themselves have to sell you, so they need a selling point. And the majority of the selling points are you're a celebrity, like the celebrities get booked an awful lot for these things uh Mm -hmm. it would be great if you were an ex-president that could get you booked and (laughs) like you can earn hundred thousand for a speech 
the other side is like I've broken a world record. I've got an Olympic medal. I lost a leg doing this. Like I don't <laughs> recommend actually chopping off your leg to get the speech <laughs> opportunity. Um, I'm not interested in that option. <laughs> no, uh, but there is like this thing of there's something special that's happened. You've done that. You can get pitched as a speaker to do that. One of the big speakers in the UK is an ex Olympian. Mm -hmm. And he talks about his race. He shows pictures of his race, the mindset, the prep, and how that applies to your life. So we would need something to make you stand out. But okay. then we would approach the speakers' bureaus. We would go to them with a package. We would make friends with them. Uh, we would get you on their books as a speaker. Uh, and then you would hope, and this is the part I hate about that strategy because you know how I feel about hope. We would hope that they then book you which then we've got to like stay on top of the people who actually sell them to make sure they're selling you, not the other speakers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. But it can be a very successful way if you get in with the right speakers bureaus, you make the friends. I have a friend who works for a speakers bureau who does that, which maybe we could organize a chat with him about that part of life and how that works. It'd be quite interesting. Um, but that is yeah. the full-time professional speech speaker and you can either go direct to the companies and the event planners and sell yourself or you can go through a speaker's bureau interesting well i don't have a lot of specialness aside from <laughs> i will be oh. i'll be on the documentary i mean <laughs> that'll come out so maybe that's like small celebrity status at that point well i guess it depends how much the uh documentary yeah. goes crazy how yes. famous you become it all yes. depends on that stuff doesn't it it does. Yeah, I have no idea what's going to happen with that. So I don't know. We'll see. But we can always come up with, there's always a way to spin, sell, create that in what you have done. There is always a way. And you have 15 years of experience. You've helped lots of people. I'm sure if I asked you a few questions, we could dig in and find that thing. There is always yeah. a way to do that. But with all of this, like, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's run the mini experiment first and see what happens. And yeah. I just wanted you to be aware of the options and know what you're doing. And actually, if the mini experiment goes well, like, there's no reason why you can't just do number two as a lead generator for all your coaches. You're delivering impact on the audience. You're having fun getting out there. You're doing it for free. So you're delivering your mission and you're building your business. Like, it sounds like a wonderful way to do it. Totally. Like if the mini experiment goes well, we could go, okay, we're going to dive on that and I'll speak to every Rotary Club in Colorado or every women's group in X yeah. and fly out there and do it. There's like there's so many different ways to make money and have fun and have an impact. Um, first step, run a mini experiment. Sounds good. Yeah, it feels a little overwhelming to think about like making this a, <laughs> a full-time thing or like a – a lot of a lot of my time but I, like i said i never know what's gonna happen in my life so we'll see start, you just gotta start, with, start. start small <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly and i think that's where everyone like comes unstuck with this stuff is they they, they see all the options and they go oh how do i do any of that and i'm like you can't you can't do any of it just don't <laughs> just do the first step um yeah. but everyone everyone does it they're like we're running the rebel finance school at the moment, Katie and I, and like people who are 30 years old and probably 15 years off retirement are trying to work out drawdown strategies and how I to take their money. In. It just means like when you come to living off your portfolio in financial independence, how do you get your money out? Ah, yes. And I'm like, you're 15 years away. The world will have changed. Like, stop thinking about that and just start <laughs> investing. That's all you need to do is put your first £100, $100 in the market and start investing. But people like to know every step before they start. And you just, you can't. You've got to figure it out as you go. Because after you've done your mini experiment, your first three talks, you will have had a whole bunch of learnings about what you like, what works, what doesn't, what the audience likes, what works what doesn't that we can apply to the second step but you can't even get to that step two until we've had the learnings yeah yeah I mean I've tried I've had experiments where I've like created something and then realized it's not 
right mm-hmm. for me. So I'm very, very clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. It, like, how do you feel about this? Do you feel excited to do an experiment? Have I scared you off? You've looked through the ways of making money. You've gone, none of them are exciting. Like, how do you feel, Kim? No, I feel I feel super excited about it. I am anticipating the transition to the new stage of my business where I have the space to to like be doing these kinds of things and the energy to do it. Because right now I don't feels feels like too much in this moment but I know in the coming months I'm gonna be I'm gonna have space and I want to be able to impact more people and put this wisdom out there so that sounds very exciting to me I love that Uh, so we're definitely at the time of the podcast where I'm going to ask you so what are you going to do about all of this (laughs) your facial expression nobody else can see that (laughs) I did though. I am um, <laughs> going to reach out to a few different groups and offer a few different topics and see if people are interested in hearing about them and then go from there. Perfect. That's it. That's all we need to do. And we will get feedback. Some groups will ignore you. Some groups will reply positively. Some groups will say no, like we're going to get a bunch of feedback. Um, So I suggest we do a second episode to work out what happens afterwards uh, and then possibly to write the speech together so that you're ready to deliver it when someone says yes. And then we'll go from there. But that's the step. That's the first step to the mini experiment is offer the topics and see if anyone buys. Cool. I'm very excited about it. Excellent. Excellent. Do you need anything else before we wrap up with the closing message? No, I feel I feel like I got the information I needed and I'm have a lot more clarity than I did at the beginning <laughs> of the call. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. So for everyone listening to the podcast, here's the six ways to get paid for presenting, speaking and sharing your message. And then I'll wrap up with my final message. So number one is an information marketer. So you give the talks for free and then you maybe sell an online course, a package, something else afterwards. Number two is a lead generator. Maybe you've got an accountancy firm and you can speak for free and then sell your services afterwards. Or in Kim's case, you speak for free and then you fill the coach's diaries with clients afterwards. Number three is the sponsorship model, which is what we do at Rebel Business School. I guarantee there is someone who wants to help the audience that you want to help, and they have a budget to do it. So it's about going out there and finding the foundation, the business, the corporate social responsibility that wants to do what you want to do. Number four is the salary speaker or the contractor speaker. It's the person that You find someone who already has the audience, is already getting paid to do it, and then you offer your service as a speaker. You get less of a cut of the money because the money always goes to the person who sells the speech or fills the room, but it can be quite a stable way if you find the right company. Number five is the trainer which is how I did a lot of my stuff. I would sell to the big organizations and I would run training courses. You can also sell your own training courses and fill your own room and you will get a larger share of the profit. And number six is the full-time professional speaker, which you can sell yourself to the event planners and to the companies who are looking for the speeches, or you can find a speaker's bureau to do it. And I guess the summary of this information is... There are so many ways to make money, so many ways to make money. If you've got an idea, if you've got a passion, if you've got something you want to share with the world, there are so many different ways you can generate income doing something you actually enjoy. So get out there, do it, find it, start with a mini experiment and see if you actually enjoy delivering a presentation or a speech. Good luck, make it happen and let me know how you get on. You can have any life you want to. 
choose to build something cool, choose to take action, choose to work to make your dreams become reality. Stand out, be different, be yourself, be a rebel entrepreneur.